Hello everyone, and welcome to SumSub, a channel about how to survive in the online jungle. People always build strong relationships with things that they can communicate with on an everyday basis. But what has the future prepared for us? How would we change when the borders between us and computers become even less opaque? Well, in this video, we won't follow the rhythm of Hollywood and speculate on war between humanity and machines, but rather explore the possibilities of our peaceful coexistence with future AI. And yes, I don't have all of the answers to the questions here, but let's at least try to formulate, well, those that are important. So anyway, my name is Bradley Peake, it's SumSub, let's dive in. Let's first try and understand how the brain works when compared to, say, a computer or the device you're watching this video from. Now, both use electrical signals to send messages. The brain uses chemicals to transmit information. The computer uses electricity. Even though electrical signals travel at high speeds throughout the nervous system, they travel even faster through the wires in a computer. Also, both transmit information in one way or another. A computer uses switches that are either on or off, right, binary. And in a way, neurons in the brain are either on or off by firing an action potential or not firing an action potential. However, neurons are more than just on or off because the excitability of a neuron is always changing. And also, we need to remember that both have a memory that can grow. Computer memory grows with the addition of computer chips, right? And memories in the brain can grow in number and in vivacity through stronger synaptic connections. You see where I'm going with this, right? Even though we don't fully understand how our brain works, we've created our thinking machines to operate just like our brain does. Now, the neural networks that we create even step up a game there because they're working exactly like the synapses in our brain. And if we want to get really meta here, take a look at man-made infrastructure. I'm talking plumbing, rivers and road systems because they suspiciously resemble blood vessels, veins and arteries, while pylons, transformers and such like, they're very similar to neural networks. We create in our image, supposedly like God did. Now, if brains and computers are so similar, well, why can't they just be compatible systems? Indeed, how far could such a compatibility go and where could it lead? With today's fast technological advancements, some individuals are actually turning to human augmentation as a method to express themselves and also experience the world in new ways. One of these individuals is Neil Harbison. Achromatopsia, or full color blindness, was a condition that the artist was born with. Far from seeing this as a limitation, Harbison refers to his natural worldview as more of a strength. Neil still can't see color, a device called the iBorg allows him to hear and sense colors. Now he's been able to hear visible and invisible wavelengths of light for the last 17 years. Different wavelengths are translated into vibrations on his skull via an antenna-like sensor that's actually implanted into his head. And this means he basically hears colors with sound. So, let's try to imagine how communication between humans and artificial intelligence might work in the near future, and also what the potential threats may be. Neuralink, start the simulation. So, Elon Musk's Neuralink startup published a video showing a monkey playing ping pong with its thoughts in 2021. Now, according to Elon's future, right, this technology might be tested on people as early as 2022. Now, it has the potential to heal brain disorders. However, it's much more than simply a neuroscientific technique. So look, how does it work? Well, do you remember when I compared the brain to the computer? Well, what Neuralink essentially does is it provides communication between the computer and the human brain. 
The electrodes that are part of Neuralink will read electrical signals that are produced by several neurons in the brain. The signals are then output in a form that the computer can interpret and also use to relink parts of the brain. This effectively acts as a bridge that links two parts of the brain that for some reason aren't able to communicate with one another. Now, according to the company's website, the device is implanted directly into the brain because placing it outside the head will not actually allow for the accurate detection of signals. It may also serve as a link between the human brain and the computer. This implies that individuals who are, say, paralyzed, can use their brains to control their phones and their computers. A main goal of the system is to make it easier for individuals to interact through text or voice communications. Of course, Neuralink may be used for more than just that. It can also be used to sketch, to take photos and do other tasks. Or, as we're imagining in this video, it can be used to create a virtual space in our brains where a sentient AI can live. Isn't that right, Neuro? Exactly. The things that are very important for me, and also for you if you're watching this channel, are privacy and security. And Neuralink, for example, doesn't look like a safe device at all. First and foremost, as for right now, it uses Bluetooth technology to communicate with smartphones or PCs. Now this communication protocol is very popular, but doesn't exactly have the security that is required for a would-be brain firewall. The potential risks are countless here. And to name but one, mind reading might become an actual thing. This familiar battle between hackers and cybersecurity professionals would reach new heights. Now, in my opinion, the war for privacy would end pretty fast. As soon as everybody's connected to the internet via their minds, society would change dramatically. You would literally be able to communicate with other people via thought, rather than via, let's say, text or sound. I mean, imagine, could we actually use our own imagination to communicate ideas? Well, in this case, obviously, privacy would become totally obsolete. But on the other hand, imagine watching Prime Minister's Question Time, where everybody could actually read Boris Johnson's thoughts. Jesus, I'd need a lot of popcorn to watch something like that. Another question here is AI and our communication with it. As Elon Musk says, We're building progressively greater intelligence and the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. His main idea is that there are two main variants of the future when it comes to AI. Would it be AI versus humans or AI with humans? Well, Elon suggests that the second variant is more optimal, obviously, and this is what Neuralink is trying to achieve. I think it would be very interesting to imagine having an AI as part of your consciousness, right? Would it be like a second voice in your head? Would it become your best friend? Would you like it there? I mean, just imagine a school system where kids can access all kinds of information all over the world by mind Googling. But also they'd be able to compute very difficult mathematical equations mentally with ease. How would this affect the world and also the system of education? And who would dominate on this tandem bike ride along the Cornish estuary with consciousness and AI as the peddlers? Would it be us? Well, perhaps not. I can easily predict a severe kind of inequality here. People, society, and nations who would develop and use such technology would obviously dominate and exploit those who couldn't or even wouldn't use it out of principle. We see something like this happening right now when we consider the uptake of COVID-19 vaccines. By the way, would you choose to live in such a system, right? Would you choose to be connected to a global system of information? To be honest, I doubt I would. But we need to remember that society and its institutes change all the time. They're in flux, right? I mean, just remember how people used to live before the COVID-19 pandemic. We've come leaps and strides. So if we would be able to communicate with our thoughts and our imagination, and we would literally know everything and anything about each other, would it wipe out personal consciousness, we might end up being like ants with such a hive mind, influenced by and influential to everyone. Well, look, I guess we should stop here because the next question would be, what makes us human beings? Or what is the meaning of life? However, if you'd like a bonus video on all of that jazz, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. To be honest, the future described in this video is an inevitability. But the big question is, 
when such technologies as Neuralink will begin to gain traction in society and develop exponentially, kind of like the iPhone did when it first came out. The fantasists of the 20th century believed that we would by now have a sustainable colony on Mars and the Moon, and how wrong they were. I imagine it would be pretty funny to watch this video in 50 years' time and laugh at the questions that we raised in this video. What people like I and Lex Friedman do is believe that we should explore the challenges of human-machine communication a bit more. At least it would help us to understand what we are and what we don't want to be. Bradley, is it time to turn on the brain dance mode? Anyway, we're done here. This is getting boring, right? End the simulation. Hee -hee. I said, end the simulation. Oh, silly. Wait, am I even in a simulation?